welcome brothers and sisters to this special edition of the daily broadcast on Facebook. We bless the Lord for you and we pray that the Lord will minister to every one of us today. Uh, we began a study on course 102, Understanding Yeshua, Jesus the Messiah, the Son of Elohim, the Son of Man. Uh, yesterday, it was quite a beautiful introduction. We looked at the offices of Yeshua and we looked at the dimensions of Yeshua, the nine dimensions of Yeshua and the 12 offices of Yeshua. There are a few things we missed and we're going to put them in that is going to make your learning complete. And today we go to lesson two. And lesson two, why was the incarnation necessary? Why was it necessary for Elohim to be incarnated in human form as a son? Why? I mean, it's something that needs to be answered. And today we trust the Lord that by His grace, He's going to unpack some truths to us. And by His Spirit, He will bring us an understanding of these things in the letters. For the letter themselves kill, but the Spirit gives life. The Spirit will breathe upon the letter the breath of life and make it come alive. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for who you are. Thank you for your word. Thank you for Yeshua, the living word. Lord, by your Spirit, we come to ask that that which Yeshua is be exposited this morning, that your people will receive a revelation and it will be such that will impact them. And for those who have known these things, there will be a reinforcement because to know him is to have life. Thank you for answering our prayer. In Yeshua's name we pray, amen and amen. Brothers and sisters, the point we made yesterday when we began is this, that this week, is one of the two weeks when Christendom, Christian religion, is in high definition display. Christianity gave Yeshua two bad days. One is Christmas time, and that bad day is given by Christendom, not by the Lord. And what does it do? To keep our eyes fixated on an innocent baby in a manger, helpless, weak, in a manger so that nativity scenes across the world will draw people. The second is the image of a helpless, semi-naked man hanging between heaven and earth on a cross, permanently there, signified by the crucifix people wear. So, with the image of a helpless baby and a man hanging on a cross, you are not able to be open to this one who came as a lamb of Elohim, who is returned as the king of kings, the lion of the tribe of Judah. People are not able to apprehend the one who should be king in our hearts, the one we should submit to, because images matter. What do you have? What is your image of Yeshua in your mind? It will dictate what you do with him. And so today, the Lord wants to give us a revelation of the divinity of Yeshua as part of the Godhead, that it is not an academic exercise. It is something that we need to understand that Elohim, if he was Elohim, omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient, then it means that he knew Elohim, and we saw yesterday the God that is us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We saw on creation morning, Genesis 1, 26, we saw at the fall of man, that, you know, to drive man away. We saw when Elohim came to visit the Tower of Babel in uh, Genesis chapter 11. You see the us, we, us, we. If he is who he is, then there is no question that he will have known that this Adam and Eve they were about to create will miss it. They will miss it because he sees time from eternity. Nothing is hidden to him. So he knew that Adam and Eve will miss it. They will fall from that glory he vested on them. And the Lord will have made provision for them to be recovered. We saw a part of it yesterday. That provision is in Revelation 13, verse 8. If you are looking for scripture or where the issue of Yeshua started, you will find it from Genesis 1 and all that. It started before time. In Revelation 13, verse 8, we are told that he was the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. 
In other words, Elohim knew man would miss it. Elohim made provision for man, and that provision is what the incarnation is all about. Elohim also knew something. Now, when Adam and Eve sinned, the DNA of sin will be transmitted through them. There are things, you see, DNA is powerful. You know, look, look at Apostle Ron and Pastor Janda. These are sports people, they are very sporty. Apostle Ron was a professional baseball star. Look at, look at Jer Pastor Prophet Jeremiah's son. When did the sports before he had the accident that drew him to another career path? Look at um, uh, the, the other son, um, Joseph. Uh, look at that. I mean, look at Sharon, sportsman. Look at Joseph, sportsman. Look at Jonathan, sportsman. Where did he come from? DNA. <laughs> Better brother, we've got to understand this. So Elohim knew that there will be a DNA of sin that Adam and Eve will transmit to the entire realm. And so, the Lord made provision for a reverse engineering of that DNA of sin to be reversed. And it will also be through somebody from heaven. In Genesis, in Galatians chapter 4, we are told in verse 4 to 7, that when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem the that are under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because you are sons, Elohim has sent for the spirit of his son into your house, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore, you are no more a servant, but a son, and if a son, then an heir of Elohim through Yeshua. So he made provision for reversal of that gene, sin gene from Adam and Eve by bringing in the son from heaven that will reverse it. It is significant to note that from the time of the fall, when it was announced that the seed of the woman will crush the head of Satan until the seed came in the form of Yeshua Jesus, provision made for resolving the sin question were largely inadequate. If you go to the book of uh, Hebrew, we're told in verse uh, chapter 10, you know, that for the law, having a shadow of things, of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the uh, commands thereunto perfect. For then would they, not, would they have ceased to be offered? Because that the worshippers once purged should have no more conscience for sin. But in those sacrifices, there is remembrance again made for sin every year. So the provision in the old covenant of bulls and goats and rams and birds, if you did this sin, you, you, you make this sacrifice, it was inadequate. It could not take care of the sin of man. So it simply covered for a season. Two years days later, a day later, you sin again, you take another sacrifice. So that and those animals and birds could not because they were of lower category than man. Man is a higher being. Man is the crown jewel of the creation of Elohim. So you can't take a lower being to take care of the sin of a higher being. It doesn't work. So the sacrifice needed to have these qualifications. Number one, it needed to be of the class of man or higher. Man is a limited being. So whatever will pay for the sins of man needed to be of that class of man or higher. Number two, it needed to, that sacrifice needed to have the capacity to take away the sins of not one person or two or three, but the whole world. Number three, the sacrifice needed to be pure and without inherent blemish. From the day Adam and Eve sinned, sin was transmitted into the world. The cause that was placed upon the earth rim to bring forth tons and tissues meant that anything that came from this earth was inherently defective. Number four, it needed to have the capacity to open the doors for the entire human family to have access to Elohim as father again. Men and brethren, that divine plan of redemption required the sacrifice of a divine personality. That's the only one that could do it. Not a human being with already the sin gene of Adam and Eve, but it had to be a divine personality whose sinless blood could atone for the original sin of Adam. So the, there was need for a second Adam. And this second Adam needed to come from heaven, not the earth. A divine being. And take on a human body. And the purpose of this 
was to take away the sins of the whole world. And in Luke 1, 26 to 35, the angel spoke to Mary, and Mary dialed with the angel, and, the, and Mary asked a question in verse 34. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon you, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also the holy thing that shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of Elohim. You need to understand what the angel was saying. You don't need Joseph. You don't need, because if Joseph and Mary had met, then sin would be transmitted into the system. The Holy Spirit brought Yeshua from heaven and put him in the womb by a divine operation so that he will come out as a human but with the nature of Elohim in his glory he left to take human flesh for a season. Men and brethren, the Lord used two people to testify of the divinity of Yeshua in a profound way. One was them, John, his beloved disciple was very intimate, close with him. John 1, 1, 2, 3. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with Elohim, and the Word was Elohim. The same was in the beginning with Elohim. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. So, you see that when he said, let us make man in our own image and likeness, so here we are told that he was part of that decision to make man in his own image. And then he who was in the beginning with Elohim, before time came in eternity, and a time came for him to come. And in verse 14 of that same John 1, John said, The word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us, and we beheld his glory. The glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And he contrasted Yeshua with Moses in verse 17. And then we saw Yeshua himself in John 14, saying verse 6, He said unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Men and brethren, so the divine plan of action, which made it possible for all mankind, regardless of race, regardless of color, regardless of gender, regardless of socioeconomic status, to be reconciled to Elohim, was hidden from both Satan and his demonic cohorts and humankind for thousands of years until these two human beings were brought and given a deep revelation, John the Beloved and Paul the Apostle. What John the Beloved wrote about in his epic treatise, the Gospel according to St. John and the epistles, you know, that he wrote regarding the divinity of Yeshua he who was pierced at the cross reveals an exceptional wonder. This revelation that a personality in the Godhead will shed his glory for 33 and a half years, living in human flesh and blood to qualify as a Paschal Lamb. John 1.29 the next day, John seeth Yeshua come unto him and said, Behold the Lamb of Elohim, which taketh away the sins of the world. Look at him. And that's what this week is all about. Prefigured by the Passover in Israel. The Christendom has taken so much rituals and syncretic things and added to it. And in, under the guise of Easter, people are now looking for uh, egg and hunting for egg and hunting for chocolate and all that. And they miss the essence. And there is a season of sin and iniquity in the church and in the world. But this is a profound season to remember the time that Elohim made provision for sacrifice for you and I, you know, he is a lamb of Elohim. And in John 3, 16, for Elohim so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, whosoever, whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. This what it's all about. This week is a week that we should ask ourselves, do we know him? And if we know him, how far has the power of his resurrection transformed us in the inward? How far are we made conformable unto his death? Like Paul said in, J in the book of uh, uh, Philippians 3, 9 and 10. You know what? Brothers and sisters, this is not a time to just get caught up with religious rituals and activities and chanting and, and chanting prayers that are without heart and just, you know, reciting things. This is a time 
men and brethren, if you look at John 8, if you look at John 6, if you look at John 14, Yeshua spoke about who he was as one with the Father, who he was, and men and brethren, this is being lost in all the rituals and the ceremonies that are being done, and it is very important. You know, in John 6, uh, chapter 14, in verse, after he said to them, is the way, the truth, and the life, he said in verse 7, if you had known me, you have known my father also, and from henceforth you know him, and I've seen him. You see me, you see my father. Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the father. He sufficed us. Yeshua said unto him, have I been so long time with you, and hast yet thou hast not known me, Philip? He that has seen me hath seen the father. And now says, how says thou then, show us the Father? Believest not thou that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto thee, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Believe me for the very work's sake. And believe me, I am in the Father, the Father is in me. We are one. Elohim is one. The Shema of Israel. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your Elohim is one. And thou shalt love thy Elohim with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy might. It's one. And it's just that by the grace of the Lord, the mystery of Elohim, a day will come when it will be accomplished. Revelation 10, 7. Until that day, we go just by what the Word says about the Father, about the Son, about the Holy Spirit. And we're told in John 20, there are many other things Yeshua did which are not written many and but these ones that are written are written that you may believe you know and the lord took me back into john and me, i'm buying back in john again for the second time this year as in dwelling in it men and brethren the book of john is a book we need to read john saw yeshua yet he was not guilty of familiarity deception one of the things that destroy a lot of believers is familiarity deception the Lord puts a vessel in your life. It could be your pastor and he's younger than you. And then you begin to try to question, try to debate, try to struggle with being under his authority. You're not doing well. The Lord brings people into our lives. We need to design them and know them. Design and know, receive from them. John was the most intimate with Yeshua. He did not allow that intimacy to make him to look at Yeshua as an ordinary human being. The testimony of Paul the Apostle, he was the second one. He was a man who was an enemy of the gospel. Yeshua went out of his way to arrest this man who was an enemy of the gospel and committed him to his trust and understanding the revelation. He knew the he knew Judaism. The man was under Gamaliel, a professor of Judaism. He knew he was vast in the war and he was zealous for everything. And the Lord took him and began to reveal to him the mystery that lies at the heart of the Pauline epistles, which some pseudo-kingdom preachers prefer to be expunged from the Holy Rich because the blindness covers their eyes. You don't know the danger of the pseudo-kingdom movement. The single danger is this. They do not receive Yeshua as God, as divine. So they say, preach the kingdom, don't preach Jesus. And they are there. They are all around you, men and brethren. Brothers and sisters, in 1 Corinthians 15, 45 to 49, we read a few of it. Paul says, so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. How be it? That was not first, which is spiritual, but that which is natural. And afterwards, that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven, and as is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy, and as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we are born the image of the earthy, so shall we bear the image of the heavenly. As we are born the image of Adam, that's what we are born into. We will also, the Lord has ordained for us to bear the image of the heavenly, that we will be manifestation of Yeshua anywhere and everywhere we are. In Romans 3, 
Paul said from verse 21, but now the righteousness of Elohim without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of Elohim, which is by faith of Yeshua unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of Elohim, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Yeshua HaMashiach, whom Elohim has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of Elohim. To declare, I say, at this time his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him that believeth in Yeshua. And then he went on to say, is there any need for boasting? No, nobody can boast. Why? Because it is of by faith. You receive it all by faith. And in the book of Hebrews, if you go to Hebrews chapter 10 and Hebrews chapter 1 and 2, they present deep truths about the person of Yeshua, who was the express image of the person of Elohim, the brightness of his glory. He spoke in time past through, you know, uh, prophets, but in these last days, in the new dispensation, he speaks to us through one source only, Yeshua. So what settles all things? Whatever Yeshua says, it settles all things. An insight into what theologians call the kenosis of voluntary laying aside of his glory and rights to operate in the earth for a speck of time as a paschal lamb is what Philippians chapter 2 says. And people cite it without knowing the deeper implications. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Yeshua Hamashiach, who, being in the form of Elohim, taught it not robbery to be equal with Elohim. That is, he didn't cling. That's what that place means. This is ancient English. Ancient. Though he was God, he didn't cling at his being God. Verse 7, But made himself of no reputation, allowed himself to come as a human being, took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of man, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death. You know, they were saying, crucify him, crucify him. He just submitted like a lamb. Wherefore, verse 9, he, went, he was obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. That's what it's all about. He took our sins upon the cross. Wherefore Elohim also, three days later Elohim also had highly exalted him and give him a name which is above every name that at the name of Yeshua every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things on earth and things under the earth, the three realms heaven, earth, under the earth meaning hell and that every tongue shall confess that Yeshua is Lord to the glory of Elohim the Father. So he's exalted, brothers and sisters. This thing the world is supposed to remember this week, but they let you get lost in religion. I want you and I to be entirely focused that Elohim in Yeshua came to take my sin, your sin, our sin, take it, the handwriting of ordinances, the, war, the Lord we couldn't keep. All of them, he took them and nailed them to his cross. Pay the price for my sin and your sin. I said, go and sin no more. It is finished. That the powers of darkness can no longer get you cheap. I have seen power of darkness face to face. That evil workers, that those who are into syncretism, who worship the dead and who glory in ancestor worship, can never call your name on their altar. It will not work. That you will be hidden in the Lord. The blood will cover you. The name of the Lord is your strength. Men and brethren, if you read the book of Hebrews chapter 7, 19 to 28, Hebrews 9, 11 to 17, you see the same thing. Hebrews 10, 12 to 23, you see the same story. And brothers and sisters, this is so important that we grasp it. Men and brethren, Paul received such a deep understanding of redemption, of the purpose of Yeshua coming. It was so intense that even Peter, Peter acknowledged the depth of what he, uh, Paul received. In 2 Peter 3, 14 to 7, he said, Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that thou may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless, and account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. 
Even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, had written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in, the, in them of these things, in the which some are some things hard to be understand, understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do the other scriptures, into their own destruction. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing that you know these things, beware lest you also be led away with the error of the wicked fall from your own steadfastness. And so Paul Peter began to affirm that Paul received, can you imagine this, receive a deep revelation of Yeshua. That's why you cannot understand the awesome glory of redemption if you don't know the book of you know, Philippians, you don't know the book of Colossians, especially chapter 1, 2, and 3. You don't know them. You can't say you know. Read all the other Pauline epistles, the book of Romans. See the mystery of the gospel. See them, oh, see them there. And this is why we need to really dwell in the world. Men and brethren, we spend a lot of time on non-essentials. There are some essentials. Paul said those, of those essentials that I may know him that I may know him, that I may know the power of his resurrection, that I may be made conformable unto his death. There is no deeper knowledge than to come to this place of pressing into the fullness of experiential knowledge and understanding of Yeshua HaMashiach and begin to grab it whole and entire and begin to come to a place where you know that you know it's not all this celebration these festivities that don't have any value that you as a person that by re accepting the conviction of holy spirit in your heart of convict of sin of rights of judgment that we can encounter the lord and a great change a new direction and then he can empower us and we will be indestructible by man we'll be indestructible by satan because we begin to wear him like a cloak whoever wants to fight against us, fights against the apple of his eye. Brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you this week, reflect on the Lord, go to study the Lord, and I want to offer you a free gift for this season, Legacies of Christ. This was one of the earliest books written very, very many years ago about the benefits of Calvary. What happened? What did he purchase for us at the cross? It's free of charge. Go to the website, www.kingdombusclub.com and those in Global School of Ministry, www.gsomonline.org. You know what? Take up your own free copy. Also download the free copy, Understanding Yeshua, Jesus the Son of Elohim and Son of Man. Take them and study them in this season. Brothers and sisters, we love you and love compels us to share these truths with you. And whether you are enrolled for the master class as in those who are admitted in the classroom on Facebook, you know, in a classroom, or you are part of the blogging class here, you know what? The same Thing, or whether you are part of the YouTube class on True Kingdom Life channel on YouTube, or whether you are on the Yes course, or any platform that works for you, or even on the audio, you know, Daybreak with the King, or you want to study by ebooks, you know what? It's all designed to offer you an experience of Elohim that helps you to know who you are and what the Lord wants you to do. So whether in the pulpit or in the marketplace, you can fulfill your destiny just by engrossing yourself in the Lord and allowing the Lord to literally take over our lives. You know where that happens? We are safe, we are secure, we can move forward. By way of assignment, number one, please take three main things you learn from this lesson why Elohim had to be incarnated as a human, as Yeshua. Why did it have to be? Just that. We're going to pray now. Father in heaven, the great I am, who I am, we bless you for who you are. We thank you for what you want to do with us in this cause. Let your name be glorified. Just have your way. The word has gone forth. Let it produce result and let your people be blessed in Yeshua's name. Amen. Please, can you share this video? The least you can do. The Lord gives the word. Great is company that publish it. Share this video and we will do it together. Thank you.